The purpose of my final lab in Physics 2011 is to examine the physics of Jackie Chan's clock tower stunt from the movie Project A. Listed on Crack.com as one of Jackie Chan's six most needlessly dangerous stunts, the clock tower stunt featured Jackie Chan hanging from the hand of a clock tower face before letting go to fall three stories down, or a distance of 18 meters, before landing head first on the ground. Without any resistance, a fall of 18 meters almost 60 feet should cause him to hit the ground at a very fast speed. However, with the help of drag and two awnings in the pathway of the fall, Jackie Chan manages to survive the clock tower fall. With the help of the principles of physics, Trackle and V Python, I analyzed the various parts of the motion of Jackie Chan's stunt from a clip of the clock tower fight scene from Project A in order to determine the effect of the force applied by the two awnings, the effect of air resistance, and the velocity of Jackie Chan during the course of the fall. In my analysis, I used Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration, with gravitational acceleration, in order to model Jackie Chan's free-falling motion. Secondly, I used the drag equation in order to model air resistance on Jackie Chan. And finally, I approximated the forces exerted by the two awnings as spring forces, which each acted with increased magnitude as Jackie Chan fell further downwards up until the point when the awnings broke. To start the procedure, I explored the clip of the clock tower standing in the tracker and tracked the motion of three different objects, Jackie Chan, the first awning, and the second awning. In order to account for the penny motion of the camera, I split the video into two tracking sessions. The first with the origin set to the location of the first awning, and the second with the second eye set as the origin. I also calibrated the video to the height of Jackie Chan at about 1.7 meters, and used the measuring tape through various points of the video to make sure this calibration checked out with the known height of 18 meters for the total fall. Then, using the position and velocity data found from Tracker, I made a V-Python model to model the different parts of the fall. I assumed both awnings had the same spring constant and that drag force had the same proportionality constant, V, throughout the course of both parts of the fall. I set the initial condition of the system with the origins based on the two awnings, with the mass of Jackie Chan as 86 kilograms, and with delta T set to 1 over 24 seconds in order to account for the frame rate of 24 frames per second in the original video. Notably, however, because the video was slowed down to about half speed from the original stunt, I had a scaling factor of one half to be multiplied by delta t for physics calculations. After approximating values for the spring constants for the awnings and the proportionality constants wear resistance until they gave results that most closely matched the data, I ran the simulation with the position from the model grafting red against the position in the original observed data grafting green. In the simulation, the blue bar represents Jackie Chan, while the yellow rectangles represent the awnings, which are also the origins. After writing the simulation, we can see that although the original data is a lot more jagged in its pattern, the general trend of the graphs of both the original data and the model match very well. Thus, we can guess that the model is a decent approximation of the falling motion of Jackie Chan. Based on the model, Jackie Chan had a relatively small amount of air resistance throughout his fall, and the awnings can be approximately made it as springs of a constant of about 3,000 newtons per meter. I decided to double check the awning spring constant by checking the conservation of energy. For the first awning, Jackie Chan stretched on about a length of 1 meter. Based on spring potential energy, potential energy equals 1 half kx squared. The energy required to stretch a spring with a spring constant of 3,000 newtons per meter, a distance of 1 meter, is about 1,500 joules. Then, using the work energy principle with the speed of Jackie Chan being 6 meters per second before hitting the awning and 2 meters per second after hitting the awning, we found that Jackie Chan lost the kinetic energy of about 1,530 joules by hitting the awning. Accounting for imprecisions due to the measurement errors, this calculation is reasonable evidence that the model of the awning that bring in with a constant of 3,000 newtons per meter is somewhat accurate. Finally, I created another computer model in order to account for what if, a what-if scenario where Jackie Chan falls the same height of 18 meters without the two awnings. I ran this model as one continuous fall in, with the origin still set as the first awning and plotted it against the observed distance for the whole fall. Again, the green line represents the observed data while the red line represents the model data. We can see that in the model where the forces of awnings don't, don't act on Jackie Chan, he hits the ground at a time of 4.25 seconds, which is almost one second earlier than he hits the ground to observe data. Furthermore, he hits the ground for a speed of 10.5 meters per second, which converts to about 23 miles per hour. In the original simulation, Jackie Chan hits the ground for a speed of 3 meters per second, which converts to about 7 miles per hour. 
The astonishing the foul caused Jackie Chan to hit the ground at speed more than three times slower than the speed he would have hit the ground at if he had just fallen straight down with only air resistance. Though it's hard to say that Jackie Chan would have died from the stunt without the awnings, the significant decrease in speed by the awnings likely helped allow Jackie Chan to improve his learning so his head wouldn't instantly hit against the ground without 860 newtons of his weight force at once. Regardless though, the clock tower stunt was a very dangerous one and did injure Jackie Chan's neck severely. In conclusion, we can safely say that with or without the help of awnings, it'd be ill advised way to replicate Jackie Chan's clock tower stunt at home, regardless of how pleasant your backyard clock tower may appear.